I believe we're live again. Welcome. This is Speed, not at the bottom of the helix, but at the bottom of the ramp. I believe we tripped over the Ethernet cable, so the helix is a little bit uh, under construction right now. Our next presenter is the AP Chair in Queensland, Australia, prolific scratch and prototype builder, another real railroader since he worked for the Queensland Rail, and probably the only MMR to model a non-US railroad. We say welcome to Mr. Arthur Hayes. Yeah, good morning from uh, Australia or good day around the world. Um, today I'm just going to have a look at um, goods and freight on the layout. Uh, I know it was sort of said in the program flat cars, but um, you won't be disappointed. There are plenty of flat cars in it. Just to let you know where I am, I'm in Brisbane, uh, Queensland, about 500 miles north of Sydney. Uh, my layout is uh, modelled on Queensland Railways. It's uh, HON 42. It's a three foot six system, which is the state government railway that runs some 500 mile, 5,000 miles across Queensland. We've also got about 100 miles of um, standard gauge coming in from the southern states, which links us to the rest of the world. So um, I guess we can start with a question. Why add loads to your wagons? Well, it's what the prototype does. They um, move freight around the network. You know, in the early days, it was sort of to open up the country. Uh, most were common carriers, so they had a right to carry everything, where today it's more, more about earning money. So it makes it look real. It also changes your wagon. We buy a lot of ready to run rolling stock these days, and we don't want everybody having the same. So by adding a load, you can change your wagons around. If you've got industry on your layout, it sets the scene. It, it shows what's going into those sidings. It can be used to add weight to your wagons, or in some cases, I've got resin kits that have got a bow in them. Uh, I put a nice lab of brass down the middle of them and I build a load around it to hide it so you can uh, keeps your wagon straight. Plus it's your personal thing, your your stamp, you've made that wagon unique to you. Plus when other guys come around, uh, it's uh, always a talking point. And they're not big projects, you can do them uh, in a two or three nights or something like that. Depending on what it is, you might get away with it with one night. Yep, adding weight can save you a little bit of pain, just as these guys found out in the real prototype. If you're modelling an era, uh, you need to have a bit of a look around because over the years, loads did change. And, uh, you know, you only just got to look at the world that we live in, how quick it changes. Well, it did the same on the prototype. You know, I worked at a place where my first stint, it was a general freight place. It was a common carrier with private sidings. I went back a few years later and a transport company had moved in and it was a whole new ball game. So it, things do change over time. And likewise with private sightings. One era it may be, um, you know, um, making wagons. And then a few years back, it could be a steel, steel plant or something. If you're motor vehicles, just watch your ear and model. If you model in the 60s, uh, you don't want a 2010 model car getting around on your rolling stock. Also look at your trains around your local area. We find this one here, you, the train heading towards the top of the picture. You can sort of see that it's, um, all the wagons are loaded. Uh, pipes, floodstone, tarp polands. Yet the train coming towards the bottom of the picture is uh, empty wagons. The, the wagon the drums just in the picture shows them on their side, which is an indicator that they're empty. So have a look at your trains, because you might find trains going one way are very different to the trains going the other way. So what I'm gonna have a look at a little bit is about rail networks, the safety management system, uh, the correct wagon and how they used to get them. 
freight distribution, trains, forces, marshalling, securing equipment, loads, and if I get plenty, if I don't start run out of time, we'll look at some special loads. Okay, every every railroad has a uh, structure gauge. It talks about um, where your buildings can be from your track centre. Last thing you want is to do a building and the train go past and wipe it out. So there's a structure gauge and you know tunnels, buildings, bridges, and then another thing is uh, track centres. How far apart are your track centres? Uh, all plays a part on what goes on a wagon. If you have a look at the older branch lines, compare it to the newer lines, you'll probably find things on the newer line have wider gauges than those on the old branch lines. There's a rolling stock gauge. Uh, depending on the where it is, our local railway has four different uh, classifications of rolling stock. So um, you know, some of it can only run in certain areas. And then we have a look, there are what we call a loading gauge. The ARTC one is standard gauge. QR is the local three foot six system. And uh, you know, this, this is what they call a loose load. The caption on the internet showed it as a load of wheat. Well, if that was a wagon a load of wheat, wheat uh, I don't think that wagon would be on its wheel, so it'd be snapped in half. Uh, looking at it from my point of view, I believe it's a wagon of chaff or something like that, stock feed. Even in containers in this modern railway, anything on a flat rack is considered a loose load where it's secured to another means. Uh, nested flat racks, once again, it's a loose load. So there's restrictions. It doesn't follow the container loading gauge, which is which is a little bit different, or they call it the fixed loading gauge. Once again, ARTC is the line south of Brisbane. QR is the line north of Brisbane. So it just gives you some idea the different types of loading gauges. The higher the deck of your wagon, it restricts the height of the container you can put on it. Often then you'll find in some of these documents, you'll get maps that outline what type of container can go where. And if you have a look at the QR one, there's four different types of containers there, you know, from eight foot six right through to 10 foot containers. So here we have a fixed load. And the fixed load is, it's a fixed object sitting in a fixed position on the wagon. Like those 20 foot boxes can't go anywhere else but sit in those positions. When we get into the fixed loading gauge, you'll find clearances in certain parts is not all that great. So if you get a container that's not quite loaded properly, you've got a situation like this where you could easily do damage. And if you do get it wrong, well, you do do a lot of damage. You need the correct wagon. And um, now crew car is not the ideal wagon to load coal. Might have got in there pretty easily, but getting it out wouldn't be too much fun. So what we've got to do is get the correct wagon. And a lot of this will depend on the era. But in the olden days, uh, when we loaded wagons or cars or trucks or whatever you might want to call them, the, the consign or would bring your local station master and give him a few details. And the station master, he'd have a look around and, and he'd sort of say, well, what size is this load? Uh, what mass is it? What classification it will be the track that it's going to run over? Because, OK, uh, you know, for us here, for example, we've got 10, 12 and a half, 15, 20, 25, 28 tonne axle loads. So, you know, you need to be, know where the wagon's going. Then you'd have a look around, see if the wagon was on hand. Um, if you know, as much as possible, you'd try to use a wagon that was in the yard that come in the previous day. Um, so if not, you'd have to order it. And 
if it was a special load or something that wasn't out of the box, something that you didn't do all the time, you'd seek assistance, uh, get somebody from special loads. So getting that wagon, it was usually an 8 a.m. wagon report and uh, you told the head office what was in the yard uh, and if you wanted a wagon, well, you'd order it and then you'd have a suitable shunt, would bring it out and uh, it would get loaded. And if you're in the more remote locations where an empty wagon was not required, you'd put it on a train and send it in as we saw in that other photo. So weight distribution. Wagons can, can, cannot be loaded over the, the axle load. So we mentioned axle loads. Wagons have carrying capacity, so you need to take that into um, consideration. Heavier loads have got to basically go over the bogey or between the bogies. And the load has got to be across the wagon. When we have a look at this um, setup here, um, we've got a wagon that can carry 51 tonnes with a tank. Then we've got a wagon that can carry 42 tonnes with a truck and trailer. Uh, the tank is 40 tonnes. Can that tank go on either wagon? Is the, you know, can I put the tank on the wagon with the trucks on? And the, the answer is no, because the f difference in the floors of the two wagons, one can take a concentrated load, the other one can't. So if I was to put the tank on the MLE, the wagon would probably buckle. When they give you the carrying capacity of a wagon, that, that weight's got to be right across the full length of the wagon. It can't be just in the centre. Once again, loads need to be even. A load like this wouldn't get too far around your layout first curve and you'd probably be out in the paddock somewhere. So it's important that your load sits even. Likewise here in a wagon where you've got a container on one end, the container configuration will only allow containers on the end. It was built for another type of container, but you know, you've know got to load containers and you've got to load get it to its destination. So if you've only got a double slot wagon, on, on it goes, but you know that wagon carries 42 ton. I can't put a 21 ton container on the other end. If I had two 21 ton, two 21 ton containers, that'd be all right, but not one. In this case, it's restricted to about 12 ton. So loading goods and freight. Normally, it's done by the guy who um, wants to send the freight. Sometimes you might get the local railway staff that will assist you. But um, if the load needs to be secured with some additional equipment like chains, somebody like a wagon builder might come down and load it for, uh, put the chains and that on for you so it's done in the right manner. Horses, we will wear trains uh, move around a bit. When you brake, just think of what happens when you're in the car. If you put the foot on the brake, you'll go to the dashboard. Um, during shunting, well, you've got forces both ways. And when you're starting, once again, if you're in the car and you plant the foot, well, you sink back into the seat. And you generally find that about every 40 wagons, you've got one wagon, a slack that's built up from couplers, draft boxes, etc. Likewise, as you travel, you've got forces, a train traveling at speed, you're going to have wind in your face. In some places, you're going to have winds uh, across the um, across the country. Like at the moment, we've got our westerly winds blowing, and uh, there'll be certain places where you, you know even we've had situations where coal wagons have been blown off the track. So give a thought for double stack containers. Uh, there's quite a, an area there for wind to buffer it around. Rough track. Well, there's plenty of that around in parts, and uh, it can sort of give you a load a bit of a shake up and uh, should you hit something, well, yep, you're going to be in trouble. When you sort of have a look at marshalling some of these loads, you'll have a look at the dangerous goods code will come into play and it might say something like um, long, uh, long poles or 
links of steel can't be marshaled next door to um, flammable liquids. Because if um, if something happens and you get a pretty good jolt, there's a good chance that that steel could come along and puncture that tank, and then we're in all sorts of trouble. Then there'll be cases where you have special loads where it, there'll be instructions issued on what's got to be done. In this case, the load needs to be marshaled behind the engine, cuts down the train forces, plus it's in a position where people can keep an eye on it. So when we look at loads uh, and how we secure them, uh, there's basically two types, or, or you can use a combination. There's the indirect, direct, and certain loads, but you might need both. So in this case here, a, a wagon full of bins, uh, web straps, it's a indirect restraint. A wagon where the load sits down between the sides of the wagon, it, it's a direct restraint because the sides of the wagon is going to stop it from falling off. And you'll notice in there there's some timber that unitizes the load, so there's no movement up and down the wagon. In some cases, you might throw a web strap over these, and uh, you know that's the use of both of them. So once again, a direct restraint where it's a fixed load going into a fixed position and it's locked to the wagon. A lot of our loads are secured with chains and you'll find in various manuals, etc., the angles of the chain is important. And there's a number of ways in which you can do the chains. You can sort of do them as they are on this load where they're just um, all basically on the side. You can crisscross them. There'll be places where you might be able to even throw them over the load. And we'll see a bit of that a little later. The way I do my chain, I, I make little hooks out of normally about 10 or 12 foul brass. Drill a hole in the object that you're going to tie to the wagon. Uh, same for the wagon, uh, where, the, where you're going to bring your chain back to. I generally leave that loose until I put the chain on. What I do is put the chain onto the vehicle. I bring it back to the hook on the wagon. I pull that hook tight, put a bit of super glue on it and set it and, and do that for the all points that you want secured. Once you've got it all sort of secured, you can trim your hooks off, paint them black to match your chain so it doesn't, you haven't got a brass look. And if you've got super glue there somewhere, instead of having a um, shiny surface, a little bit of dull coat will help that around certain parts. As much as possible, I try to use the 40 links per inch, but on heavier loads, you might go a little bit heavier. When I come to do these two loads, I couldn't get chain. There was no chain available anyway, so I had to rethink what I did. And um, this is shearing elastic. Uh, generally, the dress places um, will sell that. Um, they use it in dressmaking and hat making, etc. <coughs> and it's it's um, an elastic, so it stretches. And when it stretches out, you know, when you look at it from from three foot or whatever, it um, doesn't look too bad. Uh, both these are kits, and they come up quite good. The the um, kits, and then you can paint them to whatever colour you want. And then, with the dozer on the top, um, I made a cabin for it. That does not a part of the kit. So using a cotton reel, the roof was made in a bit of evergreen. And you'll notice with these, uh, this old sleepers that are sort of securing the, the load as well as the chain. Web straps, uh, I often use tea bags or a plastic shopping bag. In this case, I use a uh, one of those uh, hand-me-outs that they used to give us before we had to go environmental friendly. Uh, I just painted it blue, but as you can sort of see, too much handling and uh, the paint will come off it. 
at this point in time I'm happy to leave it in that way because it sort of provides a little bit of weathering. Rope, rope was widely used in the 60s and 70s, not so much today. It's considered about half a tonne and it's a secondary means, it it's, can't be used as the primary means of securing. Often wagons that are covered with uh, tarpaulins have a, a rope over them as well to heap, keep the tarp in place. Uh, for the rope I use on the layout, I just use the cotton from the wife's sewing cabinet. These uh, top wagon is a load of oranges, which is woodlands, and the bottom load is pineapples, and they cut long grain rice and painted it orange with dabs of green to sort of give you that just picked um, look. But I'm finding out that's probably not the best situation. Uh, my friendly geckos who look after my layout after dark, they seem to think it is a del delicacy and um, I'm going to have to redo it because half of them are gone. Uh, wire, wire is often used in small loads where you're going to unitize a load to go into a wagon or if it's only got, you know, not very heavy, you might use it to secure it to the wagon. Um, once again, I've just used cotton. Instead of using black, I've gone for a silver or something, something like that to represent the good old number eight wire. Tarpaulins. Tarpaulins are, are weather protection only. There's a bit of an exemption there towards um, bale products like uh, wool and hay. Uh, but as you can see from here, uh, one size fits all applications. Uh, you can have new tarps uh, in with old tarps that can sort of change the whole dynamics of your load. If you've got an longer wagons where one tarp doesn't fit, you might have to use two or three. But when you put them on, you've got to take into consideration the direction of travel. So you start at the back and work your way to the front so that any wind doesn't get under the tarps and balloon them up when you're traveling otherwise it wouldn't be real much fun in rain the rain would go in under the tarps and and wouldn't be doing their job uh, when you tie them down um, use the ties some people think you can use bogies or handbrake wheels or coupling release levers but use the ties that are provided this is a load of cotton seed, and as you can sort of see on this one here, the tarp uh, is folded up. So the tarp has little ears, and through the rat line or the rope that you tie it down with, you can fold the fold the fold up the excess tarp so it doesn't get below the running gear. This is not a um, a real great idea. Okay, it's a prototype picture, so. I'm not saying it can't be done or wasn't done, but you know, when that's tarped like that, it rains, that all fills up with water. There's movement of water up and down, the tarp sprays, and then on the water, it's all in on your freight. Plus, the guys who are doing the shunning or switching, um, they get a free bath, and it's not, not real pleasant in winter. Basically, put a bit of a pitch in it. There were uh, frames that you could put over the doors to lift your tarp up off the load if it didn't didn't come above the doors. Also you'll find in certain documents, in this case a rate book, it sort of says uh, items that you can't cover with tarpaulins and uh, you know tractors, motor cars, log timber, bricks, bones, etc etc. And some of it's um, pretty straightforward, but it also helps, the chart helps you sort of, oh yeah, I can have this as a load, or oh yeah, I never give this a thought. So it has two ways. For my tarpaulins over the years, I've used a number of things. Um, this one here is a um, just a um, piece of cloth. These two here are just Kleenex tissues out of the, out of the box. These two are, are gift wrapped uh, where the 
tissues. It was just different things that I was sort of picking up for different people's ideas. <laughs> Pardon me. But mostly now I use uh, tea bags. After they come out of the cup, I put them aside, wash them out, dry them out, and fold, unfold them. And generally, if I want a standard size tarp, I can get it out of a tea bag. And on the bottom one here, that's um, plastic, plastic sheet. It come off a medical bandage, and um, it was blue, and I just painted it the colour I wanted to. But just be mindful, plastics these days, a lot of them are biodegradable, and in a few years' time, you might find there's no tarp on your wagon. Uh, wheels, car vehicles. Um, once again, there's, it's an era thing. Uh, depending on the era that you're modelling and how it was done. For example, here we have a wooden wagon, so it was quite simple. You just put a sleeper at the front and back and a pine chock and you nailed it to the floor. But when it comes to a steel floor wagon, you've got to change it. You can't get a nail into the steel floor, so you still put your sleepers front and back, but then you uh, put another one at the end of the wagon and with some. Uh, sawmill off cuts or timber off cuts uh, you unitize the load so it doesn't move later on they developed ways that sort of made it a bit easier for you you didn't have to cart sleepers everywhere the wagons were securing bars and although they were used for vehicles there was a lot of other applications you could use them for and of course in later dates uh, later years, no double deckers, triple deckers, and open wagons were enclosed. <coughs> Trucks and tractors, machinery also make a great load. Uh, here we have some tractors. The top one's been loaded in a, in a in a city location. It's chained. The bottom one has been loaded in a country location. Probably hasn't got chains. So they haven't put them on. Uh, generally, vehicles over two ton required chains. But you can sort of see in this bottom photo, the sides have been raised to sort of a lot better arrangement than the top one. Here I've got a front end loader. Once again, I've got my old sleepers. They're made from matchsticks. Once again, you sort of unitize the unit around the wheel and the little pine chocks at each end. Still a matchstick, but you just cut, cut them into little blocks and then splice them in half on the triangle, and that gives you the wedge. And of course, they'd be new out of a sawmill somewhere, so they're not like different color to the old sleeper. Much the same setup here. This is a woodland grade, it was a kit. So when, when you do it, you put the blade on, make sure you the blade can come in within the wheels of the uh, grader, not like as if it's out on the road, otherwise it would be sticking out both sides on the wagon. Cabs are generally a problem with heavy machinery, and one way to get around it is use a well wagon. I'd love to have seen how they got that on the wagon, but there's the prototype that can be done. Trucks, much the same. They've used bars front and back here on this one and chains. And much the same on this, I've used much the same principle, just old matchsticks and I've chained them down in the trailer. Mentioned before, I said about eras. Nothing about, nothing like a better model than an old vintage bus. It sort of goes backwards from your era, not forwards. So it make a great load. Even in today's world with containers, you still see vehicles uh, getting around the network. But you'll see on these, they've got, they're pretty well covered with chains. And likewise with this one where there's, um, you know, chains and web straps holding the front of it in place. Caravans, you know, you live in a touristy area, caravans uh, often got around on rail. One thing you have to watch is the loading gauge. These vans were outside the loading gauge, so they took the wheels off. 
so they're just sitting on the hub or alternatively if you've got air cons on the top once again the old well wagon can be used and this is one on my layout where I've sort of used the used the securing bars and here I've got cotton on the back to stabilize it and over the front I've got some little chain and chocks wool uh, generally as a rule if the network carries this sort of traffic there'll be diagrams how to get your maximum load within a wagon and it sort of gives you the bottom tier the middle tier it, you might notice it overhangs the sides a little bit and then the top tier and one for an eight wheel wagon in a later era because you'll find with wool the, the bales changed you know it used to be um, a hep a type hessian in later years it become poly and the bales got they were very they got a little bit more slippery they would slide around a bit uh, if you're interested in wool that's the size of them the weight and here's an old timber wagon with a load of wool two tarps two tiers plus a few bits on top not not all loads are full loads so um, you can sort of get away with two tiers here we've got a new and old tarp once again direction of travel all comes into play in later years they went with um, one big tarp and uh, of course you've got a bit of machinery these days to help you but that traffic's all ceased now it's all put into box wagons or containers <coughs> pardon me steel traffic look you've got a open-ended book when it comes to steel you know, plate well mesh bars reinforcing beams coils pipes a lot of it was loaded into open or flat wagons in some cases in later eras there's special wagons built for them uh, loads may differ between interstate routes and local routes when you stack loading up along the wagon you normally have a staunchion uh, pocket there that you can use but then the, you, know, you put a, a base bolster down and these wagons come fitted with a bolster but if you didn't have that you'd put a, an old sleeper or something down put in a bundle and then when you had to go higher you'd put down some dunnage and it was normally 4x4 hardwood and the reason why it's 4x4 is you can't make a mistake if it was rectangular you, you got a a, a, a narrow end and a wide edge and if you stood it on the narrow end you get a bump that it'd fall over and then all your secure equipment would be loose so 4x4 four four, you can't make a mistake so where you and it all goes up straight above each other and then you your chain or whatever you're using to secure or web straps goes beside it just some examples of steel loads on flat wagons and being secured with chains wide steel sometimes you might uh, go outside the profile of the wagon then it becomes a special load and has restrictions on its travel some some locations have frames that sit the steel up on an angle or tilt wagons that can throw it up on the side open wagons bundles bundles of steel rod some girders plate steel uh, you can notice on this one some of it's wide there's various thicknesses in there some loads I've got on my standard gauge network they're all made out of just styrene sheet use anything from 5 to up to 40 thou gun metal or roof brown uh, depending on what sort of look you want depends on where it's coming from really uh, weld mesh I've just used fly screen here I sort of had a bit of issues with this load but um, it's, it's just fly screen painted with a gun metal and once again I've used the shopping bag and uh, as uh, as the securing means you noticed in the other ones they had um, belly wrapping uh, if you don't belly wrapping if you don't belly wrap it this is a, an indication of what could happen the load slips around and 
wouldn't go too far before that started going everywhere. We have the smaller steel rod or bar. You notice it's between the bogies and it's in within the door, so there's no securing equipment on it whatsoever. Generally, we're all, if, if anything, it was six inches below the door, that they generally didn't put many securing equipment on it. It was the doors held it in place. Here I've used some evergreen, and um, you can sort of um, you know, use anything that's of a round nature and make bundles and um, make it into a load. This is Rio. Once again, you can sort of see two different sizes in length. This lot is belly wrapped with a web strap as well as having a chain over it. The issue with this sort of stuff is it flattens out in transit. It's nice round bundles when it starts out, but the shaking and rattling around on the track, it flattens out, and a lot of the times the securing equipment might be, mightn't be as tight as you'd like it. The way I've done mine is I've used fishing rod. I get a piece of timber, nail in each end, wrap it around, tie it off. I mark the piece of timber in the length that I want with these here. And then I remark the other side where I'm going to tie it off. So, so you noticed in those other photos that there were tie wire around to keep the bundles. I just use fine wire, telephone wire or something like that twitch it up with a pair of pliers once you've done the lot that's on your board and then where you've marked it and that's where you cut it and you get your various lengths beams once again uh, evergreen a few of the other manufacturers sort of have this if you want it in brass uh, heavier beams Generally the rule, as much as possible, you stay within the profile of the wagon. You don't go out over the end of the wagon. Poor old shunters don't appreciate trying to work around bits of steel poking off the end of wagons. Some cases you, you'll find where uh, loads are longer than the wagon. So one end it over, runs over onto another wagon. Uh, they call it a match truck or a runner, uh, where, depending where you come from. But um, the wagons are fitted with bolsters, but in this case, there's nothing on the end. And the, the reason why there's nothing on the end is because you want this here so that you can run these loads. The loaders pay for everything they use, so why not use the other wagon as well to load something on it as, so that you can get your money's worth. And these are some of the wagons. Most wagons, our wagons are 15 metres. So 20 metres, we hang it off one end. 25 metres, we'll hang it off both ends. And that allows these other wagons for other loads. Or if you've got um, two going to the same place, you might just use the wagon in the centre and come across and put a, a lower load on the bottom of this one. This is one of the wagons where I... Um, it's a resin kit and um, I couldn't keep it straight, so I... Put a brass bar down the centre of it and then I built the load over it and it's never given me an ounce of trouble ever since. Wire coils, a few of them around these days on containers. Um, there was a period where they had wagons built to carry them. Um, the top ones I've scratch built, the, the rolls, they're just um, cotton reels and that's the enamel wire. This lot here is a manufactured um, uh, coil. Uh, once again, I've built the container, so I've got chain here. But when I come to do the load, I didn't have chain, so I've used the shearing elastic. I've used black plastic here to unitize the load uh, around the center. And then to keep the load upright, once again, I've used web straps, which are just plastic bags cut into about one mil strips. Coils of steel, lots of these days are special wagons, but you can adapt other wagons to carry it. And uh, in this one here, I've used a special wagon and I've made them from cotton reels. But if you don't want to make them, there's plenty available as off the shelf in hobby shops. 
pipes. There's um, it's a Pandora box, really. There's all sorts of pipes, steel, poly pipes, concrete, special coating, various lengths, various diameters, various loading methods. And you can have them from a single load to a full train if you want it. Here we have concrete um, uh, concrete flood pipes across the wagon. Smaller diameter wagon uh, acro along across the wagon and secured staunchions on the end to stop them from going over the head. And this is a more uh, modern load with poly pipe on a flat rack and it's all held into place with um, web strapping. These are more gas type pipe. They can, you can get them in yellow, you can get them in black. These are actually container wagons and um, they had bolsters specially made up and fitted to the wagon and they used to run them around in train loads. This is an easy one for the modeler. It's just a fairly large diameter. You can sort of see it's five pipes wide it goes up four pipes and they just sit within each other so for a modeler it's a good easy load to run and in this case it's over length so there's another wagon there behind it these pipes are coated and so couldn't put chains over them because it would damage the outer coating so they've used straps once again bolsters lined with rubber and up here just sandbags and in later years, they've come up with these special securing devices where they're adjustable and they're rubber blocks and it makes the loading a lot easier. One a wagon, container wagon full of 60 foot pipes and there you have a whole train of them. Most of my pipes are made from balloon sticks. Uh, you see, you know, they go to a shopping center and they hand them balloons out the kids and it's on a plastic stick. Uh, they can come. They come in all different colours, white, yellow, and here are just some yellow ones that I've sort of um, put on a wagon, and you can sort of um, see here the end bits have uh, been cut off. And this is much the same here. That they were white sticks, and I painted them grey, and then yellow over the top. And these here, I just painted them a Tuscan. But these loads are removable, so if I want to run the wagons empty, uh, I can. They just lift out. Steel balls in the mining industry. Here we have a wagon, scratch built wagon, a scratch built container, and lead shot is the load. When it comes to long loads, you need to sort of be wary that there comes a point where it comes outside the other wagon or the runner that's next to it. So there is a limit to how you can do it. Uh, these are 80 foot uh, piles going to Melbourne, so um, you can sort of see that they've got the extensions have been modified to carry them and chains over them. Telegraph poles or power poles. Here we have them in on a container if you're modelling them the modelling era, or in my case where I model the 60s, I just used. Uh, timber from from the tree out the backyard. <coughs> Sawn wood, sleepers in a wagon or wood planks or something that bolster or bass wood or something like that makes a good load. You don't have to fill the whole wagon, you just put a false floor in there, gives you plenty of room to put a bit of lead on the floor, gives you a bit of weight. Once again, very similar bundles of timber. A load of bricks. These were made up just using stamped brick styrene. And you might notice I've unitized the load. I've got old tires in here so the load can't move up and down. Once again the web straps. Fuel drums. Look at your local area. You know the areas where a lot of fuel was carried in drums. And you'll find the various companies that have their own colour of the drums, but loaded drums were normally loaded upright in the wagon. This one here is an empty load, and you can sort of see the object is to get as many drums in the wagon as you can. Here we've used drums as a hungry board to get more in. 
This wagon here, I didn't have enough drums to fill the whole wagon. They're Titchy Train Group drums. So I only had enough drums to go about halfway down the wagon. So the rest is a false, a false imitation. To justify the tarpaulin, I um, put some styrene blocks along the top to represent cartons of grease, etc., going to the depot. And that way, I didn't use a full, full wagon of drums, and I got away with it by putting a tarp over it, which you would not normally do. Once again, titchy drums, wagon of empty drums, departmental. Here we got spoil. And if you've got heritage steam, you might want coal. You might have a drawer full of old bogies. Well, throw them in a wagon. Or as I've recently done, I've got a heap of plastic wheels. So I added them to wagons and made wagons to accommodate them. Here's, a, here's something that will test you. Some welded rail. Uh, I've seen guys make them just using styrene on, their, on its edge. And I believe that uh, there's a manufacturer that make this in a in a uh, in, in a plastic that will be is flexible. Uh, camps you can always make up some bits and pieces for a camp. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, uh, cylinders, cranky or off freight. These are just small consignments. Once again, I use the old screen fly wire here. A few bits and pieces. One here I've made up, I've put some pellets and some gas bottles. These are just cotton reels, cut in size. The load's been unitised by using pellets on their sides. Likewise on this, this wagon, this was a freight forward of road transport who had a wagon of rough freight. So it's sort of pellets on the end. All this stuff would be sitting on pellets as well. Gas bottles, I made them. But you can get them as a product. Boats, put a frame on them. Water tanks. Even in the container world, we can have tanks. Newsprint, that make an interesting load. The good old days, uh, when workplace health and safety wasn't around. Well wagons that would sort of help you get heavy machinery down branch lines. Here we have a crane beam uh, across two wagons with swivel bolsters. This was a concrete bridge girder. Once again, it's across three wagons with swivel bolsters. You might want an army train, various pieces of equipment, bridge pontoons, uh, armoured tanks. Now you can see where I got my loading arrangements for my tanks. Uh, old trams. Uh, petrol tanker, I actually made that one, uh, built the wagon, made the bogies, uh, found a tank similar, put some decals on it. You might notice the wagon out in front has still got some of the securing equipment from the previous load, but there's no securing equipment on this one. The, the configuration in the timber work holds the back on. And I've used blue tack on here because I want to run the wagon empty as well as loaded. Beam wagons, shifting wagons from one network to another. And you might even want to send apples in coal wagons, grain in coal wagons, put a tarp over it. But look, you know, in all, all these sorts of things, uh, there's various loads available in the hobby shop. You can make some, buy some, make some, mix them up, and uh, it also adds a difference to your layout. Uh, buy and sells, look around. I wanted a, a flatbed truck. I came across a cement truck, so I ripped the agitator off, threw it into a wagon, and then made the body for my truck. So I ended up with two for the price of one. So, you know, acknowledge a couple of guys for their photos. And you know, generally, network uh, that your model have various publications and that that you can sort of read to, to um, get ideas. Uh, if you want to have a look at more of my um, layout or loads that I model, uh, I've got a blog spot and uh, generally update monthly. I've got a YouTube 
and if you can't remember them, uh, Westgate SWR will find me, or if you go onto the members area and you go into my layouts in the layout directory. So thanks guys, time for questions. Trust you enjoyed the presentation. You have everybody mesmerized in silence. Do you, uh, do you buy any loads? Uh, I mean, do you buy cars with already loads in it or you just, do you just make them all yourself? Like vehicles I buy, but um, all the other loads I scratch build myself. Cool. So there's a few questions. What are the steel balls used for in the mining industry? I'm sorry, you're breaking up on that. Can you hear me now? Yep, you're coming good now, yep. What are the steel balls used for in the mining industry? For crushing rock. They put them in a tumbler and They're rotate them. Crashed. Sorry? Okay. Yep. No, that's good. And what do you use to make for the tarps? Tarps? Um, most of the stuff these days I use tea bags. So I, I don't mind a cup of tea okay. from time to time. And um, I dry them out and open them up, get rid of the tea, and you're left with a, a nice sheet. And you can sort of... Uh, Bend them, cut them to the standard size, and um, once they're on the wagon, I generally paint them once they're on the load. So that's how you get them to keep their shape? Yep. I generally, you know, I sort of glue the top or the sides, and then with the paint, I sort of push them into the shape a little bit. And um, with the paint drying, well, that'll keep, keep that format. And of late, I've even been putting decals on them to um, put the markings that you would find on tarps. Afterwards, then, after the paint? Yep, no. They, they... I mean... No, sorry, I lost you, you there. You fold it first, you, you fold it first, and then you put the decal on, or you put the decal on before you fold it. No, I, I put the tea bag as is over the load. I paint it then, and then once it's all paint is dried, I put the decal on it after that. Because sometimes okay. with the decals, you might want a gloss surface, so you might have to sort of put a gloss coat or something on. And then afterwards, it's all dry, mm -hmm. I put a dull coat over the lot. Pretty cool. Arthur, that was an amazing clinic. Thank you very, very much. I hope people post more questions in the YouTube and in the Facebook group so that you can go in there and answer them. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming America is eating dinner right now, so. Yep. No, no. Come that's, on, guys. Fine. that's fine. So. Thank you very much. Pleasure.